Hi, I'm Apollonia. You may remember me from Purple Rain as leading lady to Prince, or from my band Apollonia 6. I've starred in films, TV shows, and I've been on the cover of magazines all over the world, including Playboy. I was also an LA Rams cheerleader. I'm going to take you with me. Welcome to my podcast, Apollonia Studio 6. Miss uh, Brenda, I know that you um, continued your singing career. I did. After mm-hmm. Apollonia 6. Mm-hmm. Kind of what what happened? Uh, tell me kind of like what the projects, uh, the evolution of your career kind of went after. Um, well, I was looking for... Um, even though Prince wanted to do the solo al- album project with me, mm-hmm. there was no specific time frame that was set mm-hmm. when this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I could see the writing on the wall that with him getting involved with the movie, mm-hmm. things that he was doing and, and you know, the family <clears throat> came in at about that time yeah. um, in their album. And even though he didn't have as much hands on with that group as mm-hmm. he had in the beginning with all of us, yeah. um, he and then he went to Graffiti Bridge mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. albums for him yeah. for his and it just um, I figured okay he says we'll do it and I'll just put trust in that yeah but in the meantime I can't sit around mm. waiting yeah mm-hmm. you know I really owe it to myself that you know if you're going to continue in music then you got to begin. Uh, working towards it and yeah. do what you can until the day happens that he says, all right, let's do this. Yeah. So I was looking for somebody to write with. Um, I'm better working as a team member than I am just on my own. You know, there were people that thought I could go ahead and just do go out on my own and be just me, Brenda Bennett. But I, um, eh, I wanted to do something with somebody, mm-hmm. even if it was just a duo. And um, when we were doing the Mr. Christian Video Project, I was driving to well, the Warner Brothers studio mm-hmm. where we were filming it one day and I had the radio on in the car mm-hmm. and a song came on and I thought mm-hmm. it was Roger Taylor from mm-hmm. Queen because mm-hmm. the voice mm-hmm. was sort of similar and I thought to myself, oh, this sounds like Roger. He's, he got a new solo uh, record out and I listened to the end of the song to find out if the, the person's name was going to be announced. And it was a, a, a guy by the name of John Palumbo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, oh, okay. I hadn't heard of his name before. And I talked to Roy about it because I was very impressed with the song. Mm-hmm. I was impressed with the sound, mm-hmm. the sound of his vocal. And um, Roy knew who he was right off the bat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said, John Palumbo? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the lead guy, writer, singer. You know, front man to a group called Crack the Sky mm-hmm. out of Baltimore area. He said, oh, Jeff Sharp knows him really well. And Jeff Sharp had worked with us on, the, on a couple of tours, mm-hmm. Prince tours. So I contacted Jeff and asked him if he was still in touch with him. Or, and he says, oh, yeah, I know John. So he kind of helped uh, put us in touch with each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, he and I started doing some writing. Okay. And then also um, I was kind of looking for some separate things for myself, some management. And um, I wound up working with Simon Austin, Mm -hmm. who was one of the uh, owners for the lighting company, Zenith Lighting Company, which was a lighting company that um, Roy had Mm -hmm. used their equipment uh, from time to time. And and I knew um, Nick Jackson Mm -hmm. pretty well, him and his uh, his lady, Kim, Mm -hmm. and Terry. and so Simon put me in touch with a, a guy by the name of D. Harris from a group called Fashion mm-hmm. out of London. Um, he thought that D. would be interested in working with me. Uh, he was a really big Prince fan mm-hmm. and liked that type of music. Mm-hmm. And he, his, his group, Fashion, was they, they had a really pretty good cult following mm-hmm. in this country. Mm-hmm. And they did well in Europe, yeah. and they did really well in Japan. Mm-hmm. So um, Simon arranged for us to meet, and I went over to England. And make a long story short, I wound up being there for like two, three years working with wow. D, writing and recording. You never had any idea that that was going to happen? You would stay that long? No, I didn't think I was going to stay that, wow, that that's... long. <laughs> 
but I lived there. I lived yeah. in London. I lived in um, wow. in a place called Maida Vale. I lived right down the street, uh, Maida Vale and Little Venice area. Mm -hmm. I lived down the street from, um, I lived around the corner from Annie Lennox and mm -hmm. Dusty Springfield. Oh, man. And um, down the road from um, guitar player from Pink Floyd. David, I can't think of his last name right now. I'm like, oh, I can't think of that happens. Okay. David Gilmore. Yeah. And um, oh my God, he's gorgeous. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's Gilmore. Gorgeous oh too. man, that guy was hot. <laughs> hey. and he, he's aged Ooh. well too. Yes, he has. <laughs> Those lips. But hey, he. Um, so I, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Those lips, baby, them lips. <laughs> he. Uh, so I, yeah, and. Um, did a lot of recording with him. Did some recording with the songs that John and I wrote. We, yeah. we recorded those. And we kept trying to, we were offered deals by um, EMI, Capital, RCA, um, Warner Brothers over there. I mean, we, and we were, were offered a, a publishing deal mm -hmm. with Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. But um, unbeknownst at the time, David was still tied. D was still tied to Arista Records, mm. and they didn't want to let him go. So anything that we had um, w w that we were being offered yeah. wasn't enough yeah. to pay off Arista. Mm. Wow. And then with me, with my visa, mm -hmm. it was getting to the point where I was either going to have to get married, mm -hmm. uh, become a full-time student, or something, because yeah. I had, in that time that I was living there, I kept coming back and forth to this country wow. so I could keep going over there and working mm -hmm. yeah. with, the, uh, you know, with him. And, um, and it got to the point. And, and I, so a change had to happen. Yeah. I came back to this country. I hadn't seen my mom in like five years. Mm. My, you know, some of my family I hadn't seen in that long. Because I'd been on the road with Prince previously to that. And, yeah. and it, was, um, it, it, was, it was kind of traumatic. Yeah. To have to split mm -hmm. and and come back, but um, I worked again a little bit with um, with John mm -hmm. and um, was working with uh, a manager with uh, that he had at the time too, to try and pick up where I, not so much pick up where I left off here, but pick up a career to you know yeah. make moves to to start doing something here back in the states. Yeah. Um, and then my brother got really ill. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have anybody to help mm. him. Yeah. Mm. He had to have a liver transplant. Okay. Mm. And um, so I just dropped everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I put the career on the back burner. Yeah. And just said, yeah. you know, this is more important. Yeah. Family yeah. first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took care of, I helped him get him through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... When he, by the once he got back up on his feet, all of a sudden, um, I found out I was going to be a mom. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I had to make another decision. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know, I didn't feel, I didn't feel right. Um, I didn't feel I'd be worth my salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a parent, mm -hmm. if I tried to maintain doing mm -hmm. a career mm -hmm. and bring up a child at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. It's just... You can't, you know, some people do, yeah. mm -hmm. but for me, yeah. I, I couldn't know. do it. Yeah. Just what, do. this week, Madonna made a public statement saying that it's that she's really having a tough time taking care of her kids and trying to do, you know, mm -hmm. her work. Yeah. She's never said that before, you know. Kardashian, mm. same thing. She has a tough time taking care of her kids and trying to, you know, take care of herself. You got, because with a career... It's a lot of kids. Yeah. Well, and yeah, kids yeah. come first. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not about you anymore. Yeah. yeah so it's you true. have to decide. When you're yeah. having those kids, it's about you. It's about them. It's not about you anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. anybody that has a career knows that it takes... Yes. It's 24-7 thing, That's especially right. yep. when it's, it's, a, it's a musical career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. kind of an artistic thing like Tough. that where you're, you're the creator of it. That's right. right. Not yeah. just, you know. And um, once my son Dylan got old enough where I found I had time back to myself mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I could start doing things. I started right. saying, jeez, uh, should I, like, what about music? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, do yeah. I want to? And my dad was great for saying a lot of different, having a lot of different sayings. Yeah. And he used to tell me when I was growing up, 
be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. Be careful what you put out there to the universe because it's listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so true. You better want what you want bad mm -hmm. enough because it can become knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. yes. And before I know it, I somebody was knocking on my door, ringing my <laughs> phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, just little by little, I got into doing a few things. And well, the local stuff mm -hmm. uh, in the New England area where I was, uh, where I've been living, and um, I agreed to do some things just purely out of the, gee, can I still do it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so can I still sing? Because while I was raising Dylan, I just I put everything aside. Yeah. I didn't even listen to the radio hardly. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. just uh, concentrated on being a mom and and doing all that yeah. and. Um, it kind of started coming back and, and you know, it, it bites you. Yeah. You know, it'll grab you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it did. Yeah. And um, this one particular situation that I was involved with, um, before I knew it, we were doing three or four of my original songs. Mm -hmm. And one of the people I was working with is a woman by the name of Lori LaCale, mm -hmm. who had her own recording studio in her home. And she was saying, you have any tracks to this, to these songs that you've written? No, not yet. And mm. she goes, oh, you know, you get, come into the studio anytime and, yeah. and, uh, and we'll do this. And um, I thought about it and I finally took up her, her offer on it. <clears throat> and um, I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm not just going to mess around with this, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I wound up doing a whole album yeah. of of uh, my own material, yeah. and it was the first time that I did everything soup to nuts. Yeah, I it, did the production. I wrote the material, produced it, yeah. arranged it. She was my engineer. Yeah, and, and you've had two solo albums. I've had two yeah, solo yeah. albums, and you mm -hmm. and you finally got a chance to release Seventeen Days. I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 2004, mm -hmm. Susan came up for a visit, and uh, he was on tour at the time, mm -hmm. and he was in Boston, mm -hmm. and I wasn't that far away from Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, Susan and I went to mm -hmm. the show, and um, he was just gobsmacked. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, what yeah. happened today? He was like... Yeah. First he saw her, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we did the same thing. You, oh, you wow. went first, and then I went after. Yeah. And he probably freaked. He was like, yeah. He just hit, at first, you know... We were talking about the curry. Yeah. This girl can make some curry. <laughs> She'll tell you, no, my son's better, but she can make some curry. I don't, in fact, the best curry I've ever liked to eat is Susan's. <laughs> and um, so I had asked her when she was up for the visit if she would do a curry uh, dinner, and she did. And my brother was there, and a friend of ours was there. And um, you, I think you brought up. Or maybe I did it. I brought I, you the know, curry. Prince, no, no I didn't. Prince. Uh, did you know Prince oh, was, was close by? He was on you tour. Did. Okay, you it said was it. me. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> and you were saying, so are we going to go? Are we going to go? And I said, I don't know. If we go, I'm not going unless I can talk to him and mm -hmm. right. say hello. Right. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm not just going to go and sit in the audience and right. watch the show. Right. And yeah. I just <laughs> that didn't feel right to me. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we went to bed that night, it was just, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. And then I think I woke you up at like seven in the morning. Too early. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the door, you know, and I woke her up and said, come on, get up. We're going. What are we doing? I said, we're going to Boston. What do you mean? What are we doing? How are we going to do this? And I said, I don't know. I'm making it up as we go. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, so we went up there, you know, and it was one of those, okay, so how are we going to do this? And I said, we're going to go to the production office and we're going to tell him that mm -hmm. we're here yeah. and let him know and you know, take it from there. And at one point, mm -hmm. this is a period of time when he had such an array of people around mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that were making decisions for him, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Decisions in the sense that uh, I think Roy might have touched on that. With yeah, the, he, yeah. Did. he did. Yeah, where he yeah. was just like... Um, it was the layers of the onion kind yeah. of thing mm -hmm. where, you know, if the person you were talking mm. to didn't think that it was good, they made a decision that, mm -hmm. oh, no, he's busy right now. You can't talk to him. Mm -hmm. Which is weird because mm -hmm. yeah. he made his own decisions when right. we knew him, <laughs> when right. we worked with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we just, uh, we had a bit, little bit of a time, but Miss Susan put her foot down <laughs> and she said, and she told him, 
what mm-hmm. for and then some more and mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen and you're going to talk to them and tell them we're here and that's all there is to it let's mm-hmm. do it now and um so they came back to us um had a seat a couple of seats for us to sit in mm-hmm. and that was he had a stage in the center mm-hmm. of the auditorium mm-hmm. and we were off the floor mm-hmm. we were up on the side somewhere good view of the mm-hmm. whole the whole thing and um over in the corner there was a sort of an entryway mm-hmm. that had a, a black curtain, um, curtain down the side mm-hmm. and the top that kind of made a, a tunnel that mm-hmm. went into the back stage area mm-hmm. the, the back of the the stadium mm-hmm. and um <clears throat> we're sitting there and all of a sudden this huge guy in a suit comes out of there real tall guy and I like this to Susan I said, keep your eye on him watch <laughs> and Susan was sitting on the seat next to the aisle and I was mm-hmm. sitting next to her sure enough the guy didn't hesitate he come walking over climbed up those walked up those stairs stopped at Susan and I'll never forget <laughs> this I thought I thought for sure you would have written his head off <laughs> <laughs> looks at Susan and says are you Brenda <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's wrong. He obviously didn't know about us. <laughs> Who we were. Yeah. And, oh and Susan goodness. didn't say anything. She just looked at him and gave him a look and went <laughs> to me. And so he looked at me and he said, come on with, come, with, come with me. And so I stood up and I looked at Susan. I said, come on, this is it. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Uh-huh. And um, we, we followed him down onto the floor, walked across the floor. And he stopped us at the end of that, that tunnel uh-huh. going in. And I looked up, and the light that was in the back, uh-huh. that was on in the hallway, I could see Prince's silhouette uh-huh. at the end of that hall, mm-hmm. that, that, that little tunnel. Mm-hmm. And he was just standing there like this kind of thing. You could see that. And I knew right away, and the guy was trying to stop me, and I just pushed his hand out of the mm-hmm. way, and I said, get out of here. Mm-hmm. And we just walked down. I, and he didn't see you. You went you. first. You went yeah. first. Yeah, and I, and I just went right to him Mm -hmm. he stood there opened his arms and it was just you know and we were just standing there hugging for a few minutes and he said oh you know they said brenda but i wasn't sure if this was the same brenda you know it's so good to see you (laughs) and all this and he's dragging me into the hallway into the light and i says yeah and you know what and i turn around (laughs) and look and she was behind me Mm -hmm. and he just the look on his face was (gasps) oh yeah and um it, it was it was pretty amazing. Wow! And he, um, it was funny because he, he said, "Okay, come on, let's go." Put his arm around her on one side, and around uh, around me on the other side. Aww. And he looks at her and said, "How many kids do you have?" Always, every time. He, even when he met me in San Francisco, <laughs> yeah. that's the first thing he ever asked me. How are the kids? Where are the kids? I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, okay, Aww. yeah." And he wanted to know how many kids I had. Uh-huh. And yeah. I said one and. We went back into the dressing room, and we had a really good amount of time to spend with him, yeah. talking with him and um, stuff. And he was so happy to mm-hmm. see us, yep. yeah. and happy that. Uh, and he said, "Oh, now I get somebody to play for tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, something special for him that it was gonna." And um, and it, it was it was good. It was a, it was a good show. Yeah. But it, uh, getting back. Uh-huh. I'm kind of like Billy Connolly sometimes. <laughs> go for it. Go, go for it. The, go for the it. Block a few go times, for it. But he, he said to me at that point, he asked if I was doing any music. Uh-huh. And I was busy raising my son at the mm-hmm. time. Dylan mm-hmm. was only about 10 or 12 years mm-hmm. old. Oh. And, um, but he said, he says, well, you know, 17 days is yours. Mm. You've got my permission to do that song anytime you want, whether you re record it, whether you do it live. You know, it's yours. Wow. And I said, Ooh. okay. And she was inducted into the Music yes. Hall of Fame. Yes. Oh, Rhode that yes. is so Rhode great. Twice. Twice. Congratulations. Twice. That, Twice. Great. that is awesome. That was great. Yes, thank Wonderful you. Your home, great. Thank your you. hometown. Yes. That's thank so you. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. So we got awesome. a few more questions here. That's there? good because I'm fading. Okay. <laughs> Seth, oh, my oh, yeah, God. Sayeth, okay. Mr. Sayeth. Right so. now it's about, let me say, what time is it? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> it's like 9 o'clock at night. Oh, uh, yeah. 6 us. o'clock our time? <laughs> yeah. Six. Okay. yeah. We're good. Oh, yeah. so We're good. We'll be back soon. There was a rumor in the 80s that Jam and <clears throat> Lewis wanted to do a Vanity 6 reunion. Is that true? Is it? Yes, it is. Well, yeah. <laughs> Why did it happen? 
Well, well, she wasn't part of our group anymore. Mm. Oh. So Did it was just us. And then okay. Apollonia, it was we were Apollonia 6, and oh. we can do Vanity 6 mm-hmm. anymore. Or yeah. whatever 6 that would have Didn't been. Didn't she want to do it with you and, and them? <sighs> she... she <laughs> she was dating someone, Nikki Six. Oh, at the time. I don't know, but I know there was a time when she was she had left already, yeah. okay. and yeah. she was dating Nikki Six and yeah. wanted to do us again, mm-hmm. Vanity Six, yeah. because she would have then legally owned because she was about to marry him, Nikki Six. She, she, would have been, she, yeah. she had the name six. Vanity, and he, if she married him, it would have been Six, and she wanted to do Vanity Six again, but right. that didn't happen. I remember mm. I read or saw her talking about she was if I marry him, she's I'll always be Vanity Six. And yes. I said, so damn clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she so called me clever. up and told me, you know, she came to Minneapolis with yeah. him to visit, and yeah. I went to meet them, and mm. they were engaged, and oh, wow. she was, uh, you know, I'm sure that was wired, wild. like, oh my God, yeah. this is it, we're going to be Vanity Six again. I said, when? Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're way past that. She goes, yes, we can, we can. I'm, That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that was so I think I think she missed that, that mm-hmm. move. She, she made a mm. bad move. Mm. I, I think she did. Yeah, because it was also, I mean, the, the um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis had had written some things. Yeah, mm. and there was a song mm-hmm. that they had written specifically for our first recording yeah. um, project yeah. with Vanity Six, yeah. and it was a song called "Nasty Boy." Oh. the one that went to Janet Jackson, and mm-hmm. yeah. it wound up going to Janet Jackson. Wow, and we all know what a big hit that it was. was. Huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. huge. It was huge. Yeah. So hypothetically, let's just say that, well, but when was this, like 86, 87, maybe this? Yeah, it had to be somewhere. Around that right after Purple Rain, right? Was well, it, it was a, no, because I'd been living in England for so a couple a of years. years after, later. Yeah, because okay, when I yes. came back finally, one yeah. of the first mm-hmm. things I did was come out to Minneapolis. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So if, if that had happened, let's just say that you did Vanity Six with, Tim, with, with Jimmy and Terry. What do you think Prince would have done? Do you think he would have liked it? Do you think he would have hated it? Do you oh, think he, he would have hated stopped it. it? Yeah, he would have hated it. <laughs> it would have been great, but he would have hated I it. I think he would have liked it, but then he would have hated it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he would have hated it because he, he liked, liked yeah. it. I, he would have I liked it, but he would, not, yeah. he would have hated he, it. He would yes. have liked it, but we, he, had, he had to have hated it. Mm. He would have liked it. Well, of know? course he would yeah. have liked it, but he yeah. would have hated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So these last three questions may be the hardest. Um, how did the passing of vanity affect you? It was very sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very sad. Yeah. Um, I, I felt personally, I felt that it was certainly too soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she had some troubles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She had a very troubling time. Mm-hmm. Um, just before she left us, she was getting involved with some stuff that did not, that, that just progressed. Yeah. And she got very much more wrapped in. And, and she has said it herself in her own, yeah. her, uh, her own words yeah. of <clears throat> how much she got involved with the drugs and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And um, she didn't, uh, when she pulled herself out of that, she had the courage. I gave her a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. For taking the step, I mean, when you're faced with a mm-hmm. with a death or life situation, mm-hmm. you know, life usually always tries to find a way. Yeah. And she did not give up. Mm-hmm. She was such a fighter to begin with already, mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, it was sad that it uh, it probably was going to happen because she put her body through some stuff. Yeah. When, during that whole period, but um, her faith pulled her through. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of things that people don't realize is that. Um, there, she was really strong to her faith in Christ. And um, it was too soon. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it would have happened, but I think it, it was too soon. And, and it was sad. Mm-hmm. I, I was sad to see it happen. Yeah. 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 And I know the first time that I met the two of you, I came with Apollonia. I actually, it was the first. I'd met her the night before. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, okay. right. Okay. Thanks to Jill Jones. Uh huh. And we came up. You drove up. From we LA. drove up mm-hmm. and to San Francisco. Uh, yeah. Saw you at the memorial service, and then we all went out afterwards. And, mm-hmm. Because the memorial service was tough. Mm. 
Yeah, and our baptism. And the baptism. Yes, we got baptized, you <laughs> yeah. and I. It was yeah. beautiful, but it was a very, it was a, it very was a, unique service. Yeah, it was mm. tough. Seeing the two of you, mm-hmm. for me, the first time there was just, like, shocking. Mm. Yeah. We just looked at each other, and we were like, and, you know, of course, her death, to me, I felt like I lost a piece of myself. Mm-hmm. It hit me hard, you know? Yeah. 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 Then I got, he knows, I got like, uh, there was articles and fans were like, oh, she's dead. I got to watch Purple Rain. Oh, you know, so there was that whole thing, you know, where people thought it was me. Mm-hmm. It's always confused us mm-hmm. for many yeah, years. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was really like so sad. I was just, I was brokenhearted. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And we went to San Francisco. Questlove, yep. yeah, Anthony and yeah. Jill, mm-hmm. yeah. Jamie, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie, Shoup. and uh, went to Ghirardelli, and yeah, chocolate, and, and, ice cream, and Jill's, and Jill's cousin, and mm-hmm. uh, we went, we went and had, we went to a seafood cream. place. First, we went, we went and had seafood. Dinner. Yeah. yeah, we went mm-hmm. had yeah. dinner first. Uh, on Fisherman's the wharf. Wharf area. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, on the wharf. And then we went up to Ghirardelli's and yeah. had ice cream Dessert. and had a good time. Dessert. Yeah, and then I passed out and went to sleep. And then you went home the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I did because yeah. I was recording. I was working on. Um, funny enough, um, you know, part of this mm-hmm. is um, Prince had. Uh, I had heard from Prince mm-hmm. about the solo album, mm-hmm. and wanting to know if I was still interested. Mm-hmm. And I said, "You bet. I'm just waiting on you." Mm-hmm. And so he, he at the t- at that time he said, "Okay, well, sit tight. You know, I'll, I'll be in touch, kind of thing." Yeah. And so I was doing some recording stuff at the time, mm-hmm. and I had a session booked. Yeah. And it was in the person that was coming in to do some stuff. It was a real difficult situation to get this person pinned down. Yeah. And there was just I was stuck between a rock and a hard place yeah. because I wanted to stay. I wanted to mm. go to the Prince's show yeah. really badly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, but I had this recording session the next day, and I ha- I had to go. Yeah. And all I could you know. My, I kept thinking, okay, how am I going to make this decision? What would Prince say mm-hmm. if I talk to him about this? What would he say? And I heard his voice, and I could still hear his voice in my head. If he was to, he would say, "You got a session? You're mm-hmm. doing music? You got to do this session? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to do this." So okay. I went and did the session. Yeah, and. Um, I, I, tra- I tried everything to keep her. So mm-hmm. did I. Yeah, we <laughs> like bribing and everything. <laughs> everything. So I just. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I, I kind of regret not having stayed to see the show, but yeah. um, God mm-hmm. works in mysterious ways, yeah. and there was yeah. a reason. Yeah. I did hear from him. Mm-hmm. Um, he, the last conversation I had with him, mm-hmm. he had asked if I had any material to bring to the table mm-hmm. for the project, and he said we're going to do it at Paisley Park, and I said that's great, I'd love that. Mm-hmm. And asked if I had material to, that I was bringing to the project, and I said I do. Yeah. And um, he said, "Okay, yeah. you'll be hearing from me or somebody yeah. else. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it scheduled." Yeah. And I said, "All right." And then um, three days later, he died. Yeah. Well, so. We saw him. Mm-hmm. You hadn't seen him in how long at that time? Had it mm, been the last time I saw him was in two thousand seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long had it been since he had seen Lorraine? Oh, oh, yeah. Because oh, that no. was like, he was... <laughs> that was cute. That was the shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they were something else together. When we were threesome, it was definitely... <laughs> they were definitely brother and sister, you know what I mean? Yeah. So They yeah. were so cute. Yeah. It's like no time had passed. No, when and I looked at him, he was like, when he first came in, he hugged Jill. And uh-huh. he looked at me, and I went... You know, I looked at him, and I went... <laughs> he goes, <laughs> she was just waiting, they were waiting to see uh-huh. each other, you know, because right. it's been such a long time. I had seen him before. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, you know, and he looked at me like, Reed. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, it means like, where are the kids? Yeah. How, are yeah. the, how are the kids? You know, yeah. come, was, come, let's go sit down, you know, yeah. always, let's go sit down. Yeah. want to see the kids. It's always the kids. Yeah. yeah. So cute. Yeah. yeah. We just bumped, we just smothered him. He was just all like, yeah. Just chilled. It's all this- <laughs> He was happy though. Yes. He was happy because oh, yeah. there were people that he his, knew his family. That he knew, yeah. 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 And uh, I was, uh, I've <laughs> probably told this, I know I've told this story on the show before, but that night, the, the, I will always talk about uh, how we were all in the row crying. 
yes. while he was performing. <laughs> yes. It was beautiful that he had a moment of happiness in such a tragic time for him. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. that, you know, the death of Vanity really took him down. Yeah. yeah. You know, we saw it. He heard the way he spoke about her when he mm-hmm. was playing. Yeah. It was just incredible. And we were just sitting there looking at each other. <laughs> we, hold, we held hands. We were just like. Yeah. Yeah. Time Ooh. of reflection, you know, yeah. it takes you back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, where were you when you heard that he had passed? April 21st, 2016. Yeah. In my bed. Yeah. Well, I was awake, but I got a phone call from my sister, from Lorene. Mm. Mm. And she wasn't even sure. Mm-hmm. She was in Trinidad and she yeah. was driving and yeah. she heard it and so she thought she'd call me to find out if you knew anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Yeah. No. Yeah. She goes, okay, I'm gonna pull aside, you know. Mm-hmm. So then my other sister, another sister mm-hmm. called. She goes, did you hear? And I said, heard what? Mm-hmm. I was just waiting to hear her say it, and I'm mm-hmm. like, she goes, it's on TV, and I'm like, oh my goodness, no, this is not mm-hmm. true. Yeah. And I just took a deep breath and I yeah. just waited mm-hmm. and I said, okay, bye. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember um, you. I was, I was. Um, yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> I was working in. Um, I got one. <clears throat> uh, I was doing uh, some work for somebody, and uh, I got a phone call from somebody. It was a colleague mm-hmm. saying, um, "Oh, uh, did you hear?" Mm-hmm. And I said, "Hear what about Prince?" And I said, "What about Prince?" Mm-hmm. And I thought it was going to be some big new thing that mm-hmm. he was, you know, announcing he was doing or whatever. Yeah. And she said, "He's died. He's dead." Ugh. And mm-hmm. all I remember was just going, thinking, you know, and I went, "What are you saying?" Mm-hmm. You know, like this, this is not a joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And she said, "I'm, oh, I'm really sorry. I thought you knew." And I just lost it. Yeah. I lost it. I and I hung up. I grabbed my phone, left the building, called Apollonia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to call you. Mm-hmm. There was no answer, or, or you weren't picking up. Yeah. yeah. And I called Apollonia. Apollonia answered, mm-hmm. and I was saying, "What's going on? What's going on? What's going on?" Yeah. I remember I got ca- your calls and Jill, and sh- I think you called me too. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that I lost those calls because when I heard them, I was just in absolute shock. And I was, I remember I tried to keep my cool. I flipped the TV on. I was getting a lot of calls, you know, from Mm -hmm. you girls, ladies. And um, I remember thinking, ah, like both of you, it's not him. I think it's a fan. And I went on Facebook. I remember I called, made some phone calls there to Paisley and, you know, to find out. And I said, no, it's got to be a fan. Something happened, you know. It can't be him. <clears throat> so I kept, you know, really positive. I don't, you know. And before that, the uh, emergency, you know, the flight where he had the emergency landing, I called at Paisley Park, you know, a certain person. And that certain person says, oh, no, he just has a flu. He just, we just had to, you know, take a, take the plane down so that he could get some fluids. He has a flu. That's all. Liquids. Because you had planned to go see him. Yeah, right? we were all ready to go see him. Oh, to see he him. had told us yep. to come mm-hmm. out. Yep. So he was waiting. We were pl- we had planned yep. to go out and meet him and yeah. get yep. together. Yeah. He wanted us to he present our platinum albums, mm-hmm. wanted to have a purple rain party. Yep. He was <coughs> painting our murals. He had all these plans for us. He still had a, uh, the, a movie for us that he wanted us to do in the capacity of Purple Rain. Mm-hmm. He has music in his vault for us. So he had, you know, talked to me about all the plans that he had. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, it was just for me, you know, just that morning, I just kept thinking, you know, the emergency landing, I was like, no. I remember I yelled at the person. I was like, what do you mean he's got a cold? He was just performing. That didn't make any sense. And I just felt something that was off. And then that morning, you know, once I turned the TV on and then CNN came on and mm-hmm. then, they, you know, I went over there and touched his face. And then I grabbed my iPhone. I don't know how I did that. I had my phone because, you know, everybody was calling. And I took a photo of the screen. I still have it. I just took a photo of the screen. I don't know. It was just some mechanical thing that I just, you know, because I still wasn't sure. But I saw that CNN had, you know, that line. And I was just like, nope, nope, pacing back and forth. And that was it, you know. Yeah. I I think that we... I don't know, but I think that when we saw him in February, 
something was a little off, I think. Mm -hmm. We think we, you know, you, you, you ladies knew him, Mm -hmm. you know, I had just met him that night, but you know, it's when, when you, when somebody sees you that knows you, that's loved you for decades, Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. known you forever, Mm -hmm. they see it Mm -hmm. when, as soon as they see you. It's like having a a child, you know, Mm -hmm. you always know, you sense things. Yeah. And I didn't, uh, um, I wasn't at that show, but I could kind of hear it in his voice when we talked on mm-hmm. the phone. Yeah. And my reaction when I, the initial shock was simmering down was that not only was I going to be able to do this album project with him after all, after all these years, mm-hmm. but that I was never yeah. going to be able to work with him again. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and that was that was um, affecting me more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I just think, could, I couldn't believe it was true. Yeah, I don't think any of us to this day uh, could accept that reality. No. I know I can't. It's no. not that we're in denial. No, but we never just said he, he's supposed to live forever. Soon. Yeah, yeah, again, too soon. Too soon, and yeah. he's he made plans. To, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. actually, on that tour that night when we had met mm-hmm. him, he was um, telling me come to Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, no, I won't. Mm-hmm. Not until you come to Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's asking. And he was going to come to Florida. Yeah, because he was asking yeah. about all the people that, when I first, the very first night I met him with my sisters yeah. and friends, it yeah. was like he was invited to dinner yeah. mm-hmm. because we we're Trinidadians. Yeah. These friends and my sisters had met his managers like a night before and yeah. him. And he goes, Do you guys make so and so? And they go, Yeah. He goes, can you make me some? So they invited yeah. him the mm-hmm. next day yeah. for mm-hmm. dinner. And mm-hmm. uh, that's where I met him when I was invited to that dinner party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was asking about all of them. Every time he meets me, you know, yeah. how's this one? How's that one? Yeah. I'm like, you know what? They do the same thing when I meet them. They ask about you. Yeah. Oh. And I hardly ever see you. So yeah. why don't you come to Florida and I'll invite mm-hmm. them? Because yeah. most of them live, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. there. He goes, okay, deal. I said, okay, I'll come then. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then that's when we were like, okay. Let's make this happen, you know. Mm-hmm. So I told everyone, he's yeah. coming. He's yeah. going to come meet you guys. You yeah. know, you'll see him finally. You don't have yeah. to ask me anymore. Yeah. And then that happened. Well, that yeah. was the first, that was really devastating yeah. for me. It was like, okay, yeah. yeah, this didn't really, this, no, it took, it took a while. I mean, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I can't even talk about him without crying. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But yeah. it's um, such a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. Vanity passing. Yeah. yeah. And then the two, three six three weeks later, apart from each other. And then he passes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Six weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, no, it just, it was so uncanny. A yeah. few days when we came back, you know, I mean, from, you know, I mean, after his passing, like two days after, three days, I remember I told Seth there was these two doves outside my window mm-hmm. cooing for about seven days. They'd just come back and coo. Mm. And I'd look and I'd made, I said it's the t- it's them. <laughs> I was like, "Hi." And I'd stand out there and talk to them. Mm-hmm. And I'd cry, you know, and I was like, yeah. "But you're together now." Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really felt, you know, there was a unity, something that God planned. Unfortunately, it was planned differently, not God, you know, yeah. but man and life and, you know, this stressful business, especially for women, this mm-hmm. entertainment business. But they're together, you know, and mm-hmm. Yeah. Two more questions and we're done. Mm. <clears throat> How did working with Prince change your life? Let's start there. Oh, you want to ask? Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, there's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the best one. It was an education. Mm-hmm. Even though I'd already been involved with music and, and different... Uh, in a, a couple of different situations, um, I learned so much from him. Mm-hmm. And um, there was things that he had a way of seeing things in you mm-hmm. that you didn't see in yourself. Mm-hmm. Or if you did see in yourself, that you didn't always have think you had the courage mm-hmm. to follow through and do. And... He kind of sometimes had a way of pulling that out of you. Mm -hmm. He had a way of um, putting you in a position where, you know, you didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes he would say, 
all right, you can't sing this? We're going to get somebody in here who can. You know? <laughs> I better do it. Because <laughs> I want to do it. <clears throat> but, um, uh, you know, he, I, I learned a lot from him. There was a, we had our disagreements. We had our, our fights sometimes. Um, it was more in the beginning than anything. But um, there, was, there was times that um, there was a closeness there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would call me at 2 o'clock in the morning often and I'm sure other people would say this too mm-hmm. where he would just you know I'd answer the phone and dead sleep mm. and I'd answer the phone because I knew by this time it was him mm-hmm. and um he would ask me what I was doing yeah. <laughs> what are you doing yeah it was always that yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. what are you doing <laughs> yeah. and, and you didn't say nothing yeah oh nothing oh uh-huh. sleeping mm-hmm. yeah. I'd, I'd say something you want to watch a movie yeah. <laughs> you know, and so it was always, and there was times that we would talk music. Uh, there was times that we, a lot of times we'd talk mu- movies and yeah. we'd talk like storylines mm-hmm. and acting and um, things like that. And um, just those moments, yeah. you really fa- had the opportunity to feel yeah. um, just a, um, a moment of your own yeah. that yeah. you could own of your own mm-hmm. with him. Special. Very special, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it didn't really have to be doing anything special, yeah. but just sitting on the couch watching a movie and talking mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and there's oftentimes people ask me, you know, how, what would it like to, to work with him? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was fabulous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I miss the most about him is working with him in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just so talented mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and such a genius musically uh, in so many ways. And, um, and it was hard times. Yeah. It was very hard times. Yeah. I mean, you can't fly that close to the sun yeah. and not get burnt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've said that. There's, there's scars. Yeah. Yeah. He flew you know, too close There always to the will sun. be. Some of them aren't as deep as others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of them are good scars. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have, I think the biggest regret I have is that I didn't stick around and, and force him into a position. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I could have forced him into anything, really. Not Prince. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. not yeah. Prince. No. But um, to stick around a little bit closer, yeah. I just kind of felt like I'll go off and do my thing yeah. mm-hmm. and, you know, come back around yeah. and mm-hmm. see, you know, and try and. He's always going to be there. <clears throat> you know? He's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I kind of, I waited for him because, you know, he it was he was calling the shots. Yep. Mm-hmm. When it, to do this solo project with him, yep. you know, he was calling the shots and, and I, I had to, I respected him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What mm-hmm. about you, honey? What do you, what do you, what did working with him change in your life? Well, he, it was a total, like she said, an education. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, um, preview or preview to the entertainment business mm-hmm. at 15 meeting him and then becoming a friend and then mm-hmm. watching him mm-hmm. in his world mm-hmm. and doing that for a couple of years until he was serious about mm-hmm. doing something with me and I'm like mm-hmm. me <laughs> <laughs> like she said he sees something in you that you don't see in yourself yeah. mm-hmm. and even though I wasn't a professional singer or anything yeah. there was something about me that he saw that I didn't yeah. and thank god it worked yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, taught me a lot. Watching him work was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hold that there, Susan. When I tell you to um, release, release in the studio, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, what am I doing? He goes, just do it. Because it, just it, one, two, three, now. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I would help him, but I don't know what I'm doing, you know? But so it was, sweet. yeah, it was, it was a great experience working with him and a, a totally different look on life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Learning, learning oh, yeah. a different life completely mm-hmm. com- yeah. from what I came from yeah. was mm-hmm. a great lesson. It, it was yeah. an eye opener yeah. for yeah. sure mm-hmm. in, in certain ways of uh, thinking about things, yeah. you know? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about, about you? you? Oh, me. Yeah. What I learned, gosh, <laughs> he was the first person that taught me to fly. Because <laughs> you fly now. Mm-hmm. And we went to go see uh, Scarface. Oh, wow. With Jerome. And then he would look at me. He goes, remember? He goes, fly. <laughs> we could say, fly pelican. <laughs> fly pelican. So he'd always tell me to fly. I had a couple other acting coaches that, you know, reinforced that flying. But he mm-hmm. gave me my wings. Mm-hmm. He saw things in me that I didn't see in myself. Yeah. And the fact that he had, you know, other projects for us. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, seeing him at Paisley Park 2014 to celebrate our 30th anniversary, he performed with Third Eye Girl. He said he was having a party and there was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> so he puts, you know, this stool on the stage and they perform. And then he asked my permission if he could film it in infrared. I said, sure. Mm-hmm. And that's when he was, you know, making the plans and, you know, took me to the big room. It was a basketball room, right? He says, we're going to put the murals. He goes, I'll have you help, you know, we'll bring the girls out. We'll do a party. So he left me with hope, mm-hmm. hope, all of us. Yes. Mm. When you have hope, that keeps you alive. Yeah. 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 And that hope all of a sudden diminished. You said the word, you said that he flew too close to the sun. Henricks, Marilyn, Elvis, mm. Prince, they're not like us. Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, the candle they're, that burns the brightest. Yep, yeah, they're not like us. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they do fly too close to the sun. Yeah, and he did it all for the the public. Mm-hmm. They do it all for the public to where they, it's like they terminate themselves mm-hmm. uh, without even trying in whatever way that they terminate themselves because the mission is finished. Mm-hmm. They gave. Everything plus. There was a point in uh, when he started doing some interviews and he was doing a bunch. He was doing some talk shows. I remember him telling, um, I think it was Jay Leno, mm. where he was. Um, Jay had asked him something about you know what made you become a musician, what made you do deci- what was the decision to do that, and he, t- he said where he had picked up a telephone book. Mm-hmm. And he opened it up and he was looking at different parts of it, you know, and I don't know if it was yellow pages or whatever. And he realized that there wasn't anything in there that he wanted to do mm-hmm. and that he better, he better make right. it in, in music because he <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> you know, he wasn't ever going to be doing anything else, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and just that um, there was a point where mm-hmm. it morphed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. He, he went into it, 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 presumably from that statement, he went into it with, I don't want to, you know, be working in a lawyer's office or do this kind of thing or do that kind of mm-hmm. thing. I want to do music. Mm-hmm. And so he did the music mm-hmm. and he was doing it to get his chops. Mm-hmm. You know, he had to get his chops up and, and um, he was determined. Mm-hmm. He, he really had, it was so determined to, um, to accomplish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so he did. Yeah. And then he just kept taking the next step. Mm-hmm. You know, he with a creative mind like his, mm-hmm. there's always going to be a next step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, when he had talked to me about doing the solo album, one of the things he had said was, uh, my life is in a position now where I can have, I can relax a little more mm-hmm. and I can make different decisions mm-hmm. about what I'm going to do musically, mm-hmm. and I find this is the time. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, as we know, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was a strong thing with him. Is yeah, he was a Gemini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he mm-hmm. changed. Who am mm-hmm. I one day? Who am I tomorrow? Mm-hmm. But um, that drive, yeah, mm-hmm. for him to create just never went away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he um, he had to. It wasn't so much to accomplish to to the world as much as accomplish to himself mm-hmm. sometimes too. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I don't know if you want to touch on this or not. Why? Do you want to talk about what happened at Paisley Park at all? Oh, when we got kicked out of Paisley oh, Park? Oh, sure. Why not? This is the moment to talk about it. <laughs> this is the time to say, well, we were mistreated and we mm-hmm. helped build yeah. that empire. That's and right. Yes. This is what this is the result. And is that yeah. fair to us? I mean, we yeah. didn't ask much. They were just taking a couple photos and of themselves. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we were <laughs> escorted out by police. I mean, like, that is a story to be talked yeah. about. Okay. It's, yeah. you know, okay. 2017. year yeah. anniversary of his passing. Yep. Yes. One year anniversary. Exactly. We go into Paisley Park. Uh, Anthony Burnside, my security, arranges a private tour for us to be alone in the Purple Rain Room mm-hmm. and to have the private tour. So they take us through the back. Never once did they tell us not to take any photos. They took us through the back. And... Uh, we had a tour of the place, which was really difficult. You know, we were both, we were traumatized. And um, uh, they sat us in his office. Uh, We'd gone there earlier in the day. Yeah. It was, we drove like, out there. Yeah. It was like afternoon when mm. we were there. Yeah. Like little, like early afternoon. 
So we're kind of waiting, and uh, they do the tour. They take us around, and the lady was trying her best to, you know, show us what we already knew. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, Brenda says, I mean, we all helped build that place, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stories weren't even, yeah. you know, correct. <laughs> exactly. So, but we were very, you know, nice. We were very kind and respectful. <laughs> it's his home. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then they take us to go see the Revolution perform. Right. So we're sitting there with the Revolution. I'm sitting with Taika and Omar, his brother and sister. And Taika would, you know, put her hand on my shoulder and says, don't cry, be happy. You know, it was just really difficult for me. Mm. And I pulled out my iPhone and I took a photo of the Revolution performing, you know, in front of his family. And from there, we go into the Purple Rain Room. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, a woman, I won't say her name, but I'll make her famous in my biography because I've got a few words for her. (laughs) She comes in and she starts harassing, berating us, trying to grab our phones. Mm -hmm. She gets an inch away from my face and I could smell her anal cavity through her mouth. (laughs) And she was, how dare you disrepair? Respect Prince's house. I was like, bitch, I almost clocked her. Yeah. I was just livid. I calmed down. I took a step back, and she just came after us. She took away your phones. Mm -hmm. And then from that moment on, you know, Anthony came over. It was chaos. Bobby Z walks out. He looks, and it was Mm -hmm. just like, I couldn't believe it. They were treating us like common criminals. At that moment, you know, we end up leaving. We're getting ready to leave. I remember the the policeman. We go the, out there, and the, the sheriff's when there. We were in the in the sound room. Uh, yes. Well, in the soundstage room where the mm-hmm. where the performance had yes. been, mm-hmm. and they held us. They were holding us there, mm-hmm. and they were berating her, and yeah. mm-hmm. and um, and I remember saying something to the to the effect of, you know, it's whose picture is on the wall. Mm-hmm. Right. Whose picture is on the wall? Who helped build this place? Right. And I remember Apollonia, the guy saying something. The guy, he, um, the officer, kind of started to make a, some sort of a threat. Mm-hmm. He's going to arrest of, me. Of a, that it, about arresting. Mm-hmm. And I remember Apollonia saying, "Go ahead, arrest me. Go ahead, arrest mm-hmm. me." Yeah, for taking a photo. <clears throat> and I should have been arrested because CNN was outside, mm-hmm. and it would have been brilliant to do the interview and say, I, I just got arrested at Paisley Park for taking a photo of the revolution. But I didn't want to blemish the one-year anniversary of his death mm-hmm. by you know me getting arrested. So I had to grab the damn phone, and then this some guy from Paisley Park there, some idiot you know who is the security, he says, delete the photo. And then he goes, he goes now go into your deleted photos. I was like, I'm ready to kick this guy in the balls. So I go into the deleted photos and I delete it, right? And I'm shaking at this point. I just, we want to get out of there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the cop, you can see the sheriff, he, you could tell he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to like arrest us, me. So finally I deleted it. I just said, just get out of here. We were traumatized. We get in the car. And uh, I was, you know, I was being, I was angry. And I let them know how angry I was because I cursed, you know, up a storm. And uh, we left. And then we I remember we sat outside and pay, uh, in the car. We were in mm-hmm. shock. Yeah. We were trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, we what were we going to do now? We were supposed to get fed. Yeah. And we were hungry. Yeah. So yeah. We're supposed basically to spend now what? Time, yeah. You know, we just got kicked out of our own home environment. Home. Yeah. Right? yeah. Our own home. Where, we were, where we were part of and right. Right. built it. I'm sorry, but, you know, yeah. I've been there for a long time. That's right. Like, But it was horrible. So we go back to the hotel room, and we were just, I remember I called Elliot Mintz, who was my PR at the time, and I was screaming, crying, Mm. and I gave him the the woman's name, and uh, I just said, you know, I'm going to create, I am going to let the world know what happened at Mm. the right time. So after that, we just went into our rooms, mm-hmm. lamented. We, we, yeah, we well, we, and we uh, and then we to the because I showed we, up, me and Jill showed up. Yeah, yes. remember our plane? You guys right. were late. We were late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because so we were supposed it. to go with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you missed the and whole thing. Apollonia was like, 
I'm happy that you weren't there because mm-hmm. Jill. Oh, she would have. Oh. She would have egged me on and would have been like us yep. beating up. You know, <laughs> would have been on CNN. Right. Yeah. Right. They would have been on CNN. Right. Right. For sure. Can you imagine? And so um, I remember we all met up at the bar. Mm-hmm. At yeah, the went downstairs. Yeah, so yeah. 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 We were at the bar. We the had drinks. We had food. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then the Anthony next day, told us the next day we couldn't go see. We were supposed to go see the time. Mm-hmm. Oh and, my gosh, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. We were supposed yeah. to go see the time, and they said you can't see the time because you're not allowed. You're banned from Paisley Park right. forever. 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 That's not a lie. Forever. Okay, so now fast forward. I've been in litigation for going on past four years yep. with the estate, and we'll discuss the reasons later. You know, another time. One of the lawyers representing the bank that was representing Paisley Park, because she was upset that I, you know, she says, oh, no, it wasn't about the photo. It was that Apollonia was drunk and belligerent at Paisley Park and created a scene. I ain't never seen you drunk. No, first of all, we never had anything to eat or drink before we got there. But we know that. But that's what the lawyer said. She goes, and the reason why I'm going to take what, you know, this and this and that from her is because she was drunk and belligerent. And I have the letter that she wrote. Think about this. There are two women that instead of supporting other women, you know, that worked with Prince and we are Prince's family, both of those women try to take us down. They try to take down our integrity, our womanhood, mm-hmm. our no respect. intelligence. No. It was awful. I mean, no I, I couldn't believe it. No. Just no respect. Yeah. Four, I mean, and then no. four years of litigation for me. So I think I could have purchased another house in Beverly Hills from what I've been paying a team of lawyers. But I'm, I am gladly fighting on behalf of myself and Brenda and Susan for four years. And it's not over yet. Because this bitch has had the biggest balls in the world. I'm not done with that yet. Yeah. And I'm doing it because it's for us. We're a family and for Prince. Yeah. Because these people don't know us or yeah. Prince. You know, so know I've no. said it. <sighs> yeah. Man. I'm sorry, but he was totally misrepresented. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And his wishes were not. Granted. This was. This would not have been something. No, they weren't. Oh, no. his wishes were not granted. No. Oh. I'm perspiring. I'm, so, I'm angry right now. I just relived it. Sense memory. <clears throat> okay, so this is the last question. I thought that was last no. question was the last. This question. is the last question. Oh. <laughs> 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 is that Latin blood? What do you believe the legacy of Vanity Six and Apollonia Six will be? Um, or has been? Has been on music, mm, on music, on women, on 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 oh, gosh. Women, female singers. To this day, there's young girls that are emulating, singing mm-hmm. our songs, dressing like us. Mm-hmm. I think we opened. It yes. was it was tough, you know. Going back a little bit to earlier when you had asked us about um, how we felt about the lingerie mm-hmm. and singing about the sexual explicit yeah. lyrics. Yeah. Um, yeah. We broke barriers. That's yep. right. Kick the doors down. I you think know? we started a revolution. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's right. Tipper Gore didn't like it. Remember? No. Yep. No. I mean, I think uh, mm-hmm. you know the stuff that the the the, fa- the Prince family was involved in, especially with Prince and his stuff, um, perpetrated mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that whole categorizing of uh, of music yeah. mm-hmm. and um, absolutely X rated yes. this or R rated that yeah. or mm-hmm. you know um, because there was quite a she had, no, I can't say vendetta, but she was, you know, the moral majority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was Definitely. a good song. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> we did, we broke barriers. Yeah. And, um, and there are a lot of young women who mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, broke a lot of different barriers, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, for people to express themselves in what they wore, yeah. women, mm-hmm. to yeah. express themselves, especially performing women. Mm-hmm. Um you know? Yeah, women of color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, I mean no one had ever seen anyone like little Susan or mm-hmm. Denise. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I come along. Yeah, I mean you know my Latino, you know, family worldwide. I mean to this day they're still you know so proud. Of this Mexican girl, you know, yeah. got picked 
to do this. Mm -hmm. And they were walking down at the Oscars. And I'm just hoping that one day, as women who kicked down the doors and enabled, you know, Cardi B and the rest of these fantastic Beyonce. women that are out just doing fantastic. Very outspoken. Yes. They, yes. they say what they want. They see how they feel. That's and right. we started it. And wore yeah. a lot of your outfits yeah. in the process. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'd like and to sing see. your songs. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to see Vanity Six and Apollonia Six inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, it wasn't a long, a lot of years. We didn't do, you know, a length of time, mm -hmm. a real length of time. Mm -hmm. But the time that we did do mm -hmm. made a, uh, an a incredible impact. impact. Mm -hmm. yes. It was potent. That's yes. right. It was potent. So mm -hmm. hopefully baby Jesus will, you know, help us manifest that. I yeah. think it'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With well, your history, you know, with, with vanity. All of it. Well, there's one thing that I'm, I like to do for our fans... You're going to hose me down from all no. this angry sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. But it felt good getting that out of, you know, all right. it's just been yeah. locked up. One thing that we do is every show we have our guests sign something and that we give away. Uh, we have contests and things like that. So this time I have brought something right from my own collection. No. <gasps> the insert, oh. the insert from oh the my gosh. Uh, Apollonia Six album, California. That is that yes. Malibu Zuma? I that, think. Oh my gosh, that is rare. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have the lady sign it, and we're going to give it to a lucky, lucky person, lucky fan. Ooh. And I just want to say today has been <clears throat> monumental. It's. I'm oh. still like. Wired. Wired. Yeah. Yeah. I am too. I'm just trying to sit calm here. You know, every night before the podcast, you know, I don't get much sleep because my brain's like, shh, shh, shh. So I got like maybe four, maybe five hours sleep, four hours. But now I'm like energized to go out mm -hmm. and put on my corset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shuffle. Man, wow. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, oh, I love my you sisters. both to pieces. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank wow. you for having us. And, yeah. yes. and we've got more to do. And I'm, This is just a start. This is just yeah. a start. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this, we yeah. got more to do. We have more to do to thank our mm -hmm. beautiful <clears throat> family out there that have been supporting us for 40 years. Yeah. Oh Going gosh, on 40 years yeah. already. Yeah. Holy cow. So we have 40 to years. say thank you. Yeah. Yes. We will. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the 40th anniversary of Vanity Six just passed yes. in 2022. Mm -hmm. It is it's true. Mm -hmm. And the 40th anniversary of Apollonia Six is going to be in 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So up. thank you, Lord, that we're here. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're all here right. alive. I'm grateful for that. Yep. <laughs> I love you both so much. <laughs> Thank you. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what, what a surprise. I'm, I'm still in shock. I mean, I'm yes. looking at you. That's why I'm just sitting here just staring at you. <laughs> yeah, yes. but you keep making me cry. It's like, <laughs> I keep tearing up all the I time. Know. But, wow, thank you so much. What an honor. I am truly honored that you're in my life. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've done for me oh. all the years. This little one took me by the hand. The first day, she was like, watch out for her. Watch out for her. Be careful with that one. And That's Brenda, not true. She's lying. No. And Brenda was like a big sister. She'd like, you know, the, like in Mexico and Spanish, right? Close, so she'd be like, you know, she'd straighten me out from time to time. And, but I listened. I listened. I never fought. I listened to you always. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking care of me, protecting me. Always. Pleasure and, working with you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say know. what you said to me at Vanity's funeral. What? I love you like beans and rice. <laughs> <laughs> I love you once. I love you twice. I love you more than beans and rice. <laughs> and that's a lot for this Mexican. Yep. I, I told that to Prince. Uh. And I got to thank him for picking me, you know, uh. so I feel good about that because I told him that. Mm -hmm. I started crying on the phone. He goes, stop it. You're going to make me cry. Yeah. Voice <laughs> but thank you so much, ladies, my sisters, yeah. family. All right. You're welcome. Oh, we got more to do. We yeah. got work yeah. to do. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's a wrap. That's, That's it. Wrap. I'm crying wow. out, Susan. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to beat you. We've had an unbelievable show today. I'm speechless. Ooh. I've been crying the whole afternoon. I... The reunion of Apollonia Studios. 
not Abalone Studio <laughs> 6. Abalonia 6. First time you've been interviewed together in how many years? <gasps> interviewed? Yes. It's been All a long three time. of you. It's been a long time. It's been probably like close to 40 years. Wow. Yep. For, I'm yeah. Speechless. Wow. So, on that note, you see these beautiful people standing behind us. Susan, <coughs> why don't you introduce your two? Well, these are my two babies. This is Aaron, my eldest, and this is Amara. <laughs> and Brenda. This is my son, Dylan. Yay. All right. Thank you so much for showing up, guys. This has been an unbelievable day. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm just speechless. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. <laughs> Say hello to the people out there. <laughs> Thank you so much to my beautiful sisters for joining us here today. I'm, uh, I'm speechless. I'm in absolute shock. And I want to thank Mr. Seth for making this happen because he planned this. I had no idea. Uh, it was a big surprise for me today. I had no idea what was going on. So... Thank you, Seth. I love you, and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I, I can't live without you. I adore yeah, you, my great. family. You're making me tear up. <laughs> family. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 